Family Theater presents Ronald Reagan, Audrey Totter, and Gene Cagney. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ronald Reagan and Gene Cagney in The Kiss of Salome Jane. To introduce the drama, your hostess, Audrey Potter. Thank you, Jean Baker. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. The West has always been noted for great deeds of prowess. Everything was said to be a little bit bigger, a little bit better. Men could ride better, shoot straighter, and boast louder than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> or so they said. But the thing they had the least of and therefore valued the most in this great frontier land, was romance. Love could prove the undoing of the strongest hero, and a kiss could start a chain of reaction that would put the atomic bomb to shame. As proof of this, Family Theater is happy to present Ronald Regan as Jack Dart, and Jean Cagney as Salome Jane in Bret Hart's gay classic, The Kiss of Salome Jane. <laughs> It was hot as all get out that day. I'll never forget it. Oh, my name's Ben Baxter, newspaper editor and head of the vigilantes in our town. Well, we'd had just about enough of Red Pete, so in spite of the heat, I called the boys together and off we rode after the outlaw. He'd teamed up with another fella, young kid, and they almost got away for a while, and then we started closing in on him. Pete raised his gun and... Missed. Doggone it, that was my last bullet. They got us cornered, Red Pete. Yeah, right in front of my own cabin, too. My own kinfolk. Leastways, it makes it handy for me to say goodbye to my old lady. Reckon we're through, kid? Ho, boy! Easy, ho! What's you stopping for, Pete? Get going. Or do you want the vigilantes to hang you? Oh, uh, shut up and stand back, old gal. Don't want you or Slomy Jane mixed up in this here ruckus. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we'll take their guns, Ben. Right. Well, you gave us quite a run, Pete. Eh, that last shot of mine would have brought you down, editor. If and I hadn't have missed. And that if and will hang you, Red Pete. Now, if you got anything to say to your folks, say it now. And say it quick. Eh, I got nothing to say. Just leave my kinfolk alone, boys. Women and kids didn't have nothing to do with my horse stealing. And Salome Jane over there, she's... Just down here of visiting. I'm real sorry I didn't get to see more of you, Pete. I'm sorry you're new, Salome. I got something to say if my husband don't. Vigilantes. Call yourselves men? Skulking around, afraid to show yourself. Except near a cabin of women and young'uns. You tie eyes are real brave. Now, Mrs. Pete. We could have picked off your husband and the stranger any time during the chase. Yeah, but you didn't. That would have took some talent. But you wanted to save them so you could hang them. Can't kill them quick and easy, can you, vigilantes? And you call that law? Me? I'll take good, sincere horse stealing any time. All there right, let go. up on that old gal. They got me, so make the best of it. Oh. And you, young fella? Yes, sir. You got anybody to say goodbye to? Now's your chance. I got nobody, mister, but I'd like to say something else. Since yeah. when does a horse thief get a chance to talk? Well, now, wait. Give him a chance, boys. After all, he's a stranger around here. Well, what do you got to say, kid? I'm no horse thief. <laughs> then how is it you ride from Judge Boompoint as horse? I suppose you just found him running loose. That's just what I did. Right after that, I met Red Pete, and he asked me to throw in with him. 
I didn't know he was a horse thief. Oh, no, no. Hey, this kid ought to write on your paper, Ben. He can sure tell a good story. <laughs> He's a mighty good judge of horse flesh, too. Boom Pointer's horse can outrun anything in this country. Well, how do you know? Maybe he is telling the truth. You taking up for a stranger, Salome Jane? Now, you're mighty handsome, Salome, but you're no judge of men, or you'd never stick up for no horse thief. But I didn't... Oh, what's the use? Uh, Salome Jane. Yeah, Ben? You might do worse than say goodbye to a dying man. And him a stranger. Salome do anything for a man? <laughs> She's too uppity for that. <laughs> next thing, you'll be wanting her to kiss him, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does look awful lonesome. Now, uh, many a young buck is lonesome around here for you, Salome. <laughs> but you won't look at none of them except in rube water. And he don't get no more than a look. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, kiss the horse thief, Salome. I dare you. Dare me? What's your name, mister? Jack Dart. Now, hold on, Salome Jane. You really ain't planning to... Kiss him? Well, he told me to say goodbye, didn't he? Well, yeah, but I didn't mean Well, that's just what I'm going to do, Ben. I'm beholden to you, miss, but... <laughs> there now, Mr. Dart. You've been said goodbye to good. Thank you. She kissed him. Right smack on the mouth. Doggies for Salome James' kiss. I'd even steal a horse. All right, all right. Time's up. Bring him along. Let's ride, boys. <laughs> We headed for Sawyer's Cross in our hanging headquarters in great and breathless haste. Maybe that's what stopped us from seeing a most uncommon change in the stranger since Salome Jane kissed him. Stopped us from noting that his color was high, his eye bright and watchful. Yeah, that haste made us careless, all right, because we was just a mile away from Sawyer's when... I'll shoot him down. No, no, don't shoot. Can't risk killing the judge's horse. Ed, you and three of the boys take out after the kid and try and get him before he reaches the woods. We'll take Red Pete on to Sawyer's. Right, Ben. We'll bring him back mighty quick. Hip, ha, ha. Salome Jane? Yeah, Dad? What's this I hear you're doing over at Red Pete's other day? Honey Foglin' with a horse thief. <laughs> well, if that's what you hear, reckon you about hit it straight, Dad. Well, that's no way for you to act, Salome. You've been a good girl since your ma died, taking care of me in the house. But you're too pretty to go around kissing strangers and horse thieves at that. And this horse thief got away, Salome, and that's a horse of a different color. Got away? Didn't you see the piece in the Sierra record? Did they let him off? Not much. Slipped his cords, he did. <sighs> Was going down the grade. Pulled up short, just like a vaquero again a lassoed bull. Almost dragging the man, leading him off his horse. And then they skywooded up the grade. More <laughs> grits, Injun. Yeah, Madison Clay. Well, go on, Dad. What happened next? He got away. For that matter, on that horse of Judge Boom Pointers, he could have dragged the whole posse of them on their knees if he'd have liked. Uh... And it served him right, too. Instead of stringing him up before the door or shooting him on sight... They must allow to take him down for the whole committee for an example. But he claimed he never stole that horse. Them vigilantes, all us clinging and hanging onto a scrap of law, and the prisoner escapes. <laughs> Makes me sick. Why, when Jake Meyer shot your old Aunt Viney's husband, I just meandered out through the woods careless like till he come out. Then I just rode right up to him and I said, All Dad. right, but... Dad, this man, this... This horse thief, did he get clean away without getting hurt at all? He did. And unless he's fool enough to sell the horse, he can keep away, too. Well, I'm taking my shotgun and going up the north pasture. Take care of a cow with a new calf. You don't need your gun for an ailing cow, Dad. Well, I'll need it in case I run into that sneaking hound, Phil Larrabee. You know we're feuding, Salome. Yeah, I know, Dad. Well, take care of yourself. <laughs> you better tell that to Larrabee. Feudin, Feudin. Wonder what it'd be like to know something different. 
different, like... More like... coffee now, slow me, Jane. What? Oh. Oh, no, Injun. I'm all through. Injun, sit down a minute with me. Mm. Injun, mm. you ever been kissed? I mean, really kissed. Why, well, it's something like, like flowers and rainbows and, and thunder and lightning and... <laughs> <laughs> you darn fool. <laughs> oh, but it was plum wonderful, Injun. And funny how it came about. I, I did it on a dare. <laughs> His lips was cold as death at first. But they warmed up some before it was over. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at me in that mirror there, Injun. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Dee, I'm mighty glad he got away. <laughs> that you, Dad? Well, who else do you expect? Phil Larrabee? What's up now? Did you see him sneaking around here today, Salome? Of course not. Why? On my way home, one of them Chinamen told me he saw him at Sawyer's Crossing. Sawyer's Crossing? Funny thing about that. Here I was thinking about Larrabee all the time I was up in the north pasture with that cow. And there were some tracks in the far end of the pasture that weren't mine. Tracks? Yeah. I followed them. They went around and around the house two or three times. As if they might have been prowling, kind of. Then I lost him again in the woods. In the woods? Uh, uh, Dad, suppose you just lie low for a few days and, and let me do a little prowling. If it's Larrabee, I'll spot him soon enough and, and I'll let you know where he's hiding. You just stay where you're at, Salome Jane. This ain't no woman's work. When it comes to feuding, Madison Clay will do his own shooting. All right, Dad. Sure. Anything you want. Just the way you want it. <laughs> But after her dad went to bed that night, Salome Jane stayed wide awake, sitting by the window, looking out at the moonlight on the pines, listening and awaiting. She didn't know for what, but waiting. Then all of a sudden she heard it, a faint click-click in the direction of the wood, a mounted trespasser in the night, bidding no good for Madison Clay. Picking up her dad's shotgun, and not knowing why, his coat and hat as well, Salome Jane slipped out into the shadows and made for the woods, stopping at a place where whoever it was had to pass before reaching the house. He's almost here now. It's him, the horse thief, or else his ghost. It, is that you, Mr. Dodd? Salome? Miss Salome Jane, is it really you or am I dreaming? <laughs> I, I reckoned you was a ghost. I might have been, but for you... Reckon I'd have come back here all the same, dead or alive. It, it's riskier coming back alive. It's worth it. Then it was you prowling around making tracks in the far pasture. Oh, I come straight here when I got away. Why? I mean, um, how'd you get here? You helped me. Me? Why, your kiss, Salome Jane, put new life in me. Gave me strength to get away. I'm innocent, and I swore I'd come back here and thank you kindly, dead or alive. You see, I never had anybody else, man, woman, or child, do for me what you did. I never had a friend, only one I picked up along the trail, <laughs> like Red Pete. But I never stole that horse. I did find him running loose, just like I told the vigilantes. But they wouldn't believe me. Do you believe me? I believe you, Mr. Dodd. I want to give him to you. He's staked out over there. They say Judge Boompointer will give $1,000 for him. I ain't lying, Miss Clay. No, let's... Let's leave it Salome Jane. Salome. Salome Jane. Oh, my name never sounded so good until you said it. Jack. Take the horse. Get the reward. I'll turn him into your corral. You'll find him there in the morning, and no one will know but what he got himself lost again and joined the other horses. Oh, I don't want the horse. Though I, I reckon Dad might. But you, Jack, you're cold and you're starving. Here, put on these duds and I'll go fetch you some food. Uh, Salome... Yes. I'll manage to get away if... Well, if... Uh, if what, Jack? 
If you'll put the heart in me again, like you did. Oh, Jack. Jack, honey. Now, now you listen to me. You lie low in the woods till tomorrow's sunup. I'll come back again. Now you go on and put on Dad's coat and hat, like I said. And keep his shotgun till morning, too. And lie close. Lie close till I come back. Oh, don't fret none. I'll be waiting. So long, Jane. Salome Jane. She's only been gone a little while, it seems like. Who's that? Is she coming back? Don't move! I got you covered, Madison Clay! What the? Jack! He must have been dogged by one of those vigilantes. I gotta get back to him. Salome? Salome Jane? I can't tell him about Jack. Yes, Dad. Who fired them shots? What's up now, Salome? Why, well, nothing, Dad. Nothing, at least, that I can find. Well, what are you doing out here? Oh, I, I was not a bed, and I, I ran out as soon as I heard the first shots. I see. You got my gun? Your gun? I know, Dad. Well, then, where is it? If that sneak Phil Larrabee fired them shots to lure me out, he could have potted me without a show a dozen times in the last five minutes. Larrabee. That's right. It must have been him that... What are you talking about, girl? Well, now, that's right, Dad. You run right on in and look for your gun. You got no show out here without it. Well, you're coming in, too, Sloane. No, Dad, I thought I... No, just... nothing. Come on, now. I won't have a daughter of mine wandering around loose in the woods at night, especially when shooting's going on. But, Dad... A gun don't know whether you're male or female, you know. Oh, Dad. I guess somebody hiding my gun like that. You see there? It ain't by the door. Who shoot Madison Clay? I don't know, Injun. I... Say, did you hide my gun? Me? No. No. You know Injun won't touch a gun, Dad. No. Well, I don't hear no more shooting, so the danger must be over now. Might as well get on back to bed. And see that you turn in, too, Salome Jane. Ten o'clock is too late for a gal to be gallivanting around. All right, Dad. <sighs> I'll try to get some sleep. <laughs> But Salome Jane didn't sleep that night. She kept wondering if Jack Dart lay dead or dying. But it wasn't till the pale pink dawn painted the summit of the White Sierras that Mad fell asleep. Then Salome crept downstairs and there by the light of a guttering candle, scrawled a note to him. Dear Dad, in spite of what you said, I'm going out to see who fired them shots. Promise you won't leave the house till I come back. And leaving the note open on the table, Salome Jane ran out into the growing day. All right, Salome. Mad! Oh, Mad, you in there? What the thunderation? Let me get my boots on. Oh, all right, all right, I'm coming. What you trying to do, tear the door down? Ah! Madison Clay, me afraid. Who's a-breaking that darn door down? Why didn't you see, Injun? Ah! Maybe Phil Larrabee. Yeah, oh, he wouldn't have the guts to come around when I was here. What? Breckridge. Well, you are a cool one, Mad. What's up, Breck? You ought to be in scooting out of this. I don't know what you're talking Listen, about. Listen, man, it's all right to know nothing to the law, but I'm your kin, and I'm here to tell you that Phil Larrabee's friends just picked him up. What? Drilled clean through with shotgun slugs. If he weren't so mean, he'd be deader than a crow. Well. <laughs> Larrabee deflated, huh? <laughs> now, get going. They're letting loose Larrabee's two half-brothers on you. Oh, how can they tie it on me? How can they tie it on you? Didn't you have to go and leave your hat and coat behind you like a darn fool and your shotgun? My... My shotgun? Yeah, I got all your stuff on my horse. Picked them up in the woods coming over here. You ain't got more than time to get over the state line and among your folks before they'll be down on you, man. Look, Madison Clay. Paper on table. Huh. Note from Salome. What is it? Salome done it. 
disguised herself in my coat and hat and shot Phil Larrabee herself. Disgraced me by doing what I should have done, and by trickery, too. That just ain't honest feuding. Yeah, here's your stuff, man. Now, get a hustle on, but... What are you gawking and staring at? Give me that gun. Sure, here. Just like I thought. Both barrels has been discharged. Well, of course... Look here, Mad. There's been no foul play, has he? What do you mean? There's been no hiring a man, no deputy to do this here job. You done it fair and square yourself. Yes, by gum, and who says I didn't? Then wake up and light out. All right, Breck, but first you go out to the crowd and pick me out a good horse. I got something to write to Salome Jean. All right, Mad, but don't take too long. This won't take long. Madison Clay, what you do? You go on back to your people, Injun. You'll be safe. But Madison Clay... Leave me alone now. I got a right. Uh. Salome, you might have told me you did it and not leave your old father to find out how you disgraced yourself with him too. I have said I done it. Took all the blame myself. The house and stock is yours. But you ain't no longer the daughter of your disgraced father, Madison Clay. I hope I don't never see this place again. Well, you're in plenty of luck, Mad. Luck? Yeah, I found that stole horse at Judge Boom Pointers. Got away and strayed among your stock in the corral. Now, you take him and you're safe. He can't be outrun this side of the state line. I ain't no horse thief. Nobody says you are, but you'd be worse. You'd be a fool if you didn't take him. I'm testimony that you found him amongst your horses. So if you've ripped the Salome Jane, come on. All right, Brick. I'm ready. <laughs> Here I am, Salome. Oh, darling. Oh, Jack. Jack, you're hurt. No, but I wouldn't mind that if... I know. I know you're thinking I was afraid to come back here last night when I heard the shooting. But Dad stopped me, Jack. I, I couldn't get away till now. A man shot at me. I thought it was a vigilante first. And then he called a name. He thought I was your dad. Well, that'd be Phil Larrabee. He was after Dad, all right. And you drilled him, Jack. Yeah. Then I rode off thinking I might be followed. And then it come to me all of a sudden if... Larrabee thought I was your dad, and everybody else would figure he'd shot him. So I come back here to tell the truth, Salome, and take his place. Oh, do you think they believe you? Why, well, they was going to hang you for horse stealing. What do you think they'd do to you for shooting Larrabee? I don't know. No, Jack, I'm not going to let you. Hey, someone's coming. Quick, get oh. back in the brush. Why, well, it looks like Dad and Breckenridge Clay. Your dad's on the judge's horse. And the way they're riding, they must be heading for the state line. Jack, Dad's already taken the blame for Larrabee's shooting. Why, he's even took the horse you were supposed to have stolen. Oh, Jack, Jack, you don't have to go back and take his place. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the way Madison Clay left the county and the way Jack Dart was vindicated. Oh, and a month later, a handbill was posted on one of the Sentinel Pines, reading... Announcement. The clay property and quarter section will be sold at auction to the highest bidder by Mrs. John Dart, daughter of Madison Clay, Esquire, who has returned to his estate in the bluegrass country for his <clears throat> state of health. And still later, a few years, in fact, Another announcement came from the same estate in the same bluegrass country. This stock farm has produced the best racing blood in the country. And that's because my son-in-law, Jack Dart, is the best judge of horseflesh in the country. A straight and respectable man. And as for his wife, she's a beauty. To see her at the springs, rigged out in the latest fashion, you'd never think she'd ever lived outside of New York. <laughs> yes, sirree. That kiss of Salome Jane sure started something. The 
this is Audrey Totter again. We often feel that our own problems are unique, that for others life is rather easy sailing. Sometimes our problem is the endurance of a great sorrow, but oftentimes it is the steady frustration which monotony induces in us, an endless procession of uninteresting, uninspiring tasks and duties. We feel that life is passing us by. We forget to look around us and see what many others really have to put up with, what a tonic it is, and how encouraged we are when we meet with manly and womanly poise and dignity in the sufferance of trials, both great and small. More often than not, when this poise and balance is genuine and trouble-proof, we find that it comes from personal prayer, an undeniable confidence that God is one's anchor. And family prayer, too, is the anchor of the home. No storm of misfortune or of temperament really can wreck the family which family prayer anchors. It makes a family composed and durable when everything seems bound to crack it up. Outbursts of temper, turbulent nerves, fits of disgust and unwarranted rivalries can reach destructive proportions. But when our Lord comes among us, as we pray, the gales subside. We of so little faith are renewed in our faith, our faith in ourselves, in others, and in him. In reality, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Ronald Reagan and Jean Cagney in The Kiss of Salome Jane, with Audrey Totter as your hostess. Featured in our cast were Polly Bear, Herb Vigran, Verna Felton, Tom Holland, Howard Culver, and Byron Kane. The Kiss of Salome Jane was adapted by Virginia Cook from a short story by Bret Hart, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, was directed for Family Theater by J.F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week at this time when Family Theater will present Wendell Corey, Gene Raymond, and Tom Tully in William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Join us, won't you? (laughs) Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.